Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar. How process intelligence can help organizations navigate major change. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're using the tool GoToWebinar. You can ask us questions on the left hand side of the screen. We won't be able to answer them directly, but we'll get back to you with a good answer within 24 hours. My name is Michel Exley. I'm joined today by Hans Mulder. Um, great. Uh, you can Good join us you. again. Excellent. Thanks. Yep. Um, yeah, could you uh, tell us something about yourself because your CV is <laughs> magnificent, so uh, okay. we could go on and on. Let's, uh, let's do it. So my background is uh, I'm an entrepreneur in the IT, but as you might know, not all the IT projects are successful. So I became a researcher at the universities. And when I have an understanding of the problem, I'm going to lecture the solutions. So actually, I'm in the domains of entrepreneurship, research, and education. So uh, these are my uh, resume, uh, and I'm very much involved in improving, of course, the quality of the processes of organizations. Thank you. Great, thanks. So let's continue then, eh? because we have something to tell to yeah. the audience. So before we start, this is a really nice image uh, yeah. of a re really old factory. Um, before we start, um, the, the name of the webinar, it, it says uh, Process Intelligence. And I think many of our customers and partners um, talk about process mining. Yeah. Um, is, there, is there a big difference and what are the differences? Yeah, there's a difference. I think that uh, about 20 years ago, it was all about process mining. You want to have the data visualized on the level of the processes. But what we can see now is that is not an aim in itself. What is the goal of mining is understanding, understanding the design of the processes. And that is also only a means to an end, because it is not about understanding and designing the processes, it is to improve your organization and your customers. So actually when you're looking at intelligence, it means you are going to close the loop. You are having the data real time from your processes, doing the analysis and the design, thinking of simulation and improvements, applying those improvements, get it back into the data, and then you are closing the loop. So actually it's a continuous way of improving your organization. And that means that you have an intelligent way of working. Therefore it's called process intelligence, and one part of it is indeed process mining, but yeah. only a part of it. Yeah, yeah. okay, oh, great, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so tell us something more of this great image where they probably didn't do anything with process mining. Uh. Well, actually they had a very <laughs> strict process. And the process, as you can see, is like rooting towards this factory. It's beautiful. But that is not the way in which we are going to work in, those in, 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 in our days. Nowadays, it is much more like on the level of the knowledge the information. So you could say these are production workers and they have a very logistic flow of operation but what we see now is that we don't work in a factory like this but we were all working from our own place or working from home, working from anywhere actually while we're using digital uh, equipment for that. So that means that there is a process nowadays but it is not on this physical basis. So you have to have a look at it uh, from the perspective of, well, this is your factory, these are your production employees, let's say, but where is the coordination? Where is the knowledge? Where is the creativity? Where are you making the decisions? And that can be done from several places in the world. So in that sense, there is a shift. There is a shift from the industrial age to the digital age, and some organizations like Gartner, they call it the bimodal, you know, which you see the industrial way of working in a well repetitive way uh, regarding the new innovative way. And what we see is that if you have a situation where the processes are not directly connected to the people, the data will be your connection. So if you want to be a manager of this facility, you need to have to look at the data. And that means that the process data must be something which can be analyzed, simulated, designed, improved. Yeah. So you can see here is the real cause of uh, why we cannot do it on a, let's say, basis like we can see each other and we can have a handover. 
we have to organize it on a different way. So that is, I think, a very illustrative way, and you can see that actually this operating mode is going to an operating mode from the robotics. So yeah, I think this is a very good example of seeing two uh, ages, the ages of industrial and the uh, ages of digital. Uh, and then the question arises, how are we still working on our processes? And what I've seen in the last years is that we're going to use the wall, we're going to draw all swimming lanes, we're going to put all kinds of stickers, and then we say this is the process, we think. But we're not sure, because perhaps it doesn't work that way in practice. So if you want to operate this, you cannot do it on the old way. You have to include your data into your process management. And that, of course, leads to a different approach regarding the way in which you're going to handle the processes. Uh, have a look at that. And when we can see this as an example, eh? this is an example from Antwerp, beautiful city. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to go in Antwerp because of the corona. So I'm working from home. This is the empty share. Eh? Some people it's probably where you usually sit. Then this is my place. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this is my place where I'm going to sit when yeah. I'm lecturing uh, for the students. And on the other hand, you can see over here that there are some students who are living in Belgium, but some other students are working and living in the Netherlands and abroad in Germany. So they are also present, but they are present online. Yeah. So and then a day later, my colleague, who is Flemish, he was there sitting in a chair and then the others were watching. So what you can see is that this is a way in which the hybrid mode, you could say a bimodal mode, which in the physical part and the digital part are a little bit blended. Yeah. And that is in the age we are in now. So it means that process intelligence is not only for the future, it's also needed for the current way of working. And that is where it becomes very interesting, because it is not only about the digital processes you should have in the process intelligence, you should also have the current processes in it. And that is, I think, where it becomes very interesting in making the transformation, because it is not that we know that we are going digital, but what are the steps in between? What are the steps you take first? What are the steps you take next? Where is your first experiment? And that means that when you have the opportunity, uh, like we've seen here and we see over there, what would you like to improve? You cannot improve the entire factory at once. So you have to have a look at a certain part of the process. And that means that you're going to have a look at some of the transactions. And that is, I think, where uh, research comes in. And uh, as you might know, we have a very interesting research uh, agenda and we are working from universities and with large major cities in the Netherlands regarding process intelligence. Yeah. So we are now working on the parts what can we do first to improve the processes while maintaining still an industrial environment and step by step are going to this one. Yeah. So how does that migration, that transition, that transformation take place and that will, for some organizations, be very fast, because if they are in a commercial mode, they need to do it very rapidly, because the environment, as you might know, is changing a lot. But for some organizations, they can do it much more on a paced way, step by step. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it, it took people uh, a long time to grasp the understanding of process mining? Because I, yeah. I remember speaking to somebody when I f just finished my study just over 10 years ago and yeah. he told me about process mining and I was like, but that, I have that in Visio, right? So yeah, right. that's the way I work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that more and more people now actually understand what it, what it is and what you can do with it. Yeah, I think that the technology, what I said before, is already there for, for decades, yeah. but it is more about the adoption, how to absorb that way of working into your organization. Yeah. And that means that yeah, if you have this organization in place, you need a different perspective on your process uh, because they will do the things you like to do, but if you program them. Uh, so that means that you have to take into account what are the possibilities, what are the 
impossible things uh, what we cannot do now. Uh, and I think that that is something which uh, in, the, in the past was not the, uh, the focus. The focus, as you mentioned it correctly, was does process mining work? Yes, it works. But the next step is how to apply it. And if I see those projects, most of the projects are very isolated. They are looking for the needle in the haystack. They are looking for fraud and I, I found something in the data which is possible fraud case. Yeah. But what we are talking about now is not about those single cases, it is the way of managing. Yeah. It is a daily operation, it is a daily way of managing with a strategic view on where to evolve as an organization in an environment which is very chaotic. Yeah. And if you have that perspective, it is not about the tooling of process mining, it's about the organization of your processes, in which mining is very important. Very important, but it's not the aim. The aim is to evolve. The aim is to improve continuously, and that means that you cannot say I have done my, do my, my job by doing the analysis. You still have to implement that, and that is not in the domain of technology. That is in the domain of management, in the domain of the employees of the organization, and unfortunately, that takes more time. Yeah. That is the thing, so you're completely right. It is, it is not that we are saying, well, this is completely new. No, the technology is there, it can help you, but you need to transform your organization, yeah. otherwise you cannot use it. And then you need culture to change. The culture, <laughs> the, the way in which uh, the, the, the responsibilities are being grouped. So I think that we are very functional. As you can see in this picture, uh, you are doing function A, you are function B, and together A and B is leading to a sub-product and that leads to the entire product. So each function is being separated. While in this case, you have to say, this is the operation room. Here are the operators. But they are not allowed to, let's say, make the decisions because you need actors. So that means that you have here a hybrid mode of people making decisions and machines operating. Yeah. And that I think is something which, and this was also the case, but here you see people are working as operators. They don't have the opportunity to change their works themselves. Because here perhaps, at the head office, <laughs> eh, they are saying, Time motion analysis, do this first, do that then. That is your way of, of, of working. Uh, there's a distinction between the design of the process and the execution of the process. What I would rather have is that those teams are capable of improving their work. So what if you have this? That means that upon what we can see visible, what is physical, there should be and governance in which teams are working together to improve the operation. And those teams should be able to have a fact-based approach. So they need the data out of the production, match that with their expectations, see if there are possibilities to improve, there is again, to simulate that, and if that leads to a satisfactory outcome, then again this will be adopted. So you'll see something which you cannot see, which is actually invisible to the eye, is that also here, just of course what we couldn't see in the former picture, there will be coordination. There will be a kind of structured way of addressing changes in the environment and translating those changes into the organization and vice versa. So yeah, I, I think that is a marvelous way of, of seeing that we are working on things which are already are there, but they are still now much more clear. And we are forced to that, because if we didn't have the corona at such uh, a way it is manifesting itself now, we would still have all kinds of people working here yeah. in the same room. But now you don't have to work in the same room. You can see it, eh? I just get the example. This is my room, but actually I'm completely into the organization. I'm, I'm seeing my students. Yeah. I also have a camera. I can see them. So I can see that. Uh, and I can interact with them. And, and, and they make, 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 make jokes. They, they are telling stories to me. <laughs> it is also like I, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. So that is something which I think is much more clear now that we should have this technology which is just a means to an end in order to improve the process of your 
organizations. And this is an educational process. Yeah. Yeah. So, Hans, you probably get this a lot. The education system is uh, sometimes outdated. People <laughs> think they, uh, they, uh, there is a need to change. Do you, do you think that uh, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak uh, helped uh, the digital transformation in the education system? Yeah, I think so. There are some of those uh, who claim that education didn't change since the Middle, middle Ages. Uh, so uh, they say when you are a professor at mathematics uh, and you are making your notes on the board, you could do it still now in the, the current times. But I think that there is a major change. And the major change is that if you are in a physical basis, that means that you are working from the perspective that we all are the s more or less the same. Well, if you are making a disconnect, and that is what happens if you are working by the corona on a basis of working from home, you need to be more tailor-made. So it means that not everybody is in the same room, but also there is a difference in the way people learn and how fast they learn. So what we did, we entirely reversed the process. So in the first years, it was about first providing theory, then giving examples, then doing exercise with case studies, and then you can apply it in practice. That is how it works worked because what we really are doing now is we are starting from the work they have to do an assignment they say hey this doesn't really add up what can i do then they say oh there's a question could we look in literature could we look in theory to answer your practical questions so in that sense we are reversing the way of education and that means that you are in a much more coaching role. So the role is not that I'm going to send all the information because they can find it already. It is there on YouTube. They can find it in the PDFs. So it is very a waste of your time just to speak to the group and say, hey, let's go read this book. No, what we're going to do now is, it is interaction. So next to having a visual, next to having audio, we are working on the same knowledge repository. So for instance, we have a course which is based on process architecture and we are using tools so that everybody, and you can see it, we're working also here on their laptops together with me on the processes. So that means that it becomes very practical and I think that that is something which we can do because of the hybrid mode we are in now. So to answer your question, Yes, I think that it was already possible, but we were, let's say, more focused now to introduce those changes in education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. You're right, you're right. So, Hans, I'm guessing you see loads of students nowadays <laughs> on your computer, but yes. um, uh, I'm guessing you see a lot of research projects as well. And yeah. I was wondering, right. do you have any research projects you've seen recently on digital transformation or process intelligence yeah. that you want to tell us about? Yeah, of course, because there are students which are really learning me more than I am teaching them. Uh, so uh, one of those students uh, is uh, Edsel Botjes. He is an enterprise architect and he looked at the chaos theories. And one of the theories was from Taleb. Uh, and he said, well, we are just focusing to be really strong in the changes of the environment and then it breaks and actually you should be anti-fragile. And I was talking anti-fragile, that's so, mama students, what are you talking about? And of course, then I have to learn as a teacher. So I began reading all the books of Taleb, uh, looking for information on the internet on it. And it is interesting. So the condition is that you don't think that the future is clear. You think it will always be chaotic and that is not a bad thing. That is something which can strengthen you. And then I was seeing all kinds of similarities between businesses and those examples from anti-fragile. For instance, if you are injected with a vaccine, you are a little bit becoming ill. But afterwards, you're stronger than before. So if you break your leg and your leg is cured, where the leg was hurt, it's stronger than before. So that is meaning by anti-fragile. 
trying to be making use of the chaos in your environment to become stronger. And when you apply that on your processes, I can see a direct link to his research. Because this process changed, how can we adapt it? How can we change the process in a way? And that means you have to do the analysis, do the design, and improve. So yeah, I think that my students yeah. are one of the most inspirational sources I have. Yeah. Because they provide me with new insights and with lots of literature. Yeah. Do you have any documentation you can share with the audience on, on this? Sure, sure. Yeah. And I love it because education is about um, uh, exchanging ideas. So his master thesis, which is perfectly written in English, is actually available as an open source. Yeah. So, so I, I can send you the link yeah. afterwards. I think uh, if uh, anybody wants yeah. to see this, uh, just let us know. Leave a message in the message pane and we'll, uh, we'll send it over. Yeah. yeah. And I think okay. that is nice because then you see that there is something which I already started with. Because now I say it is not me as an entrepreneur who sees things going wrong and then going to research. And then when I a little bit understand it, I'm going to lecture. Now it's vice versa. Those people are working in practice, they're doing a study, they learn, they make a master thesis, and we can use that as an input for practice. Yeah. So then the circle again, the loop eh, is about the loop yeah, we have yeah, to, yeah. to work on. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, this is my inspiration. I think that if you can use education as a change agent eh, and not just seeing it as something you have to do to receive a diploma, but it is something which you can apply in your organizations as a change, then I think education has his uh, place uh, in the, uh, let's say, management yeah. Uh, department. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nice. So Hans, we've now looked at education. Um, are there any daily practices that things you see at companies you work with, uh, any projects you're working on right now? Yeah. Well, I think that, as I said before, it is also about research. So I also have to look at the practice from the perspective of new things which are being researched uh, and, and developed. So a kind of R&D environment. So now we are working together with two major Dutch cities, city of Amsterdam, which is the capital of the uh, Netherlands. Uh, also, you know that New York was formerly known as New Amsterdam. Eh? Yeah. So it is also a really international uh, city. And the other city we are working on research is the Rotterdam, one yeah. of the major harbors in, in Europe. And those cities are working together now on process intelligence. And that research project is very interesting because we need to have the data. We need to have the standards. And yeah, as you might know, uh, this is the city of Amsterdam. And they have captured their processes in the platform of Maven. And another example is the city of Rotterdam which also captured their processes in Maven. So now, what we are trying to do is having a look at a typical part of the processes, as I mentioned before in the industrial age, and see how does Amsterdam execute those transactions on a fact basis, and how does Rotterdam do those, ba uh, those analysis. And then you have a delta, and you can say, hey, what can we learn between the two cities? What is the reason why you do it in that way or that way? So are we are leveraging again the way of process management. So it is not anymore on the management of your own process in your own city. It is even comparing those between the two cities. And to make it even much more interesting for me is that the let's say the cooperation of all cities in the Netherlands, which are combined in uh, what they call in Dutch the Vereniging Nederlandse Gemeente, so that is a cooperation of the Dutch cities, they are also partner in this project. Yeah. And that means that if you can see between the major cities how it works, you can also apply that to other cities. 
And that is, I think, what process mining is, will be about. It will not be only isolated to your own organization. It will be applied to a complete value chain. It can be applied to a domain, to a sector, to yeah, even, as we see here now, complete uh, cities uh, in, 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 in a country. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my prediction is that Amsterdam and Rotterdam could also be inspirational for cities like New York. Because why should we not learn from each other's experiences? And if that is the case, well, you can see that process intelligence is really intelligent. Because it means that you have not only the wisdom of all those participants, but you also have the data of those participants. And you can simulate that, and you can work on that. So I think that that will be a major research breakthrough, because we are then not looking anymore at the processes just as writing them on the wall. You can really see them as a, as, as a video, uh, and you can really look at what are the steps as is, what we can redesign, in a to be, and we can see the outcome of that. And that I think that will be only possible if you have access to the data, if you have a platform to dispute the data, if you have open standards with the data is uniform, so you can make a comparison between different departments, different cities, and so on. So Hans, the, the yeah, beautiful pictures of the skyline of Rotterdam and the, the canal in Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really cool that these uh, two uh, cities are working together. Are, are they in, there any examples of how they've helped each other, things they've learned from each other? Yeah, there are of course differences. As you might see here, this is a very old inner city. And Rotterdam is a very new city. It all has to do with the history of those two cities. And what you can see here is that you have to maintain a lot. And the maintenance of your streets, your bridges, and so on, is different than maintaining very new bridges, of course. So there are differences. We know that, we see that. But there are also similarities. Uh, one of the similarities is, for instance, in how to help your citizens. And uh, what we can see in Amsterdam is that they are very much into the vision of one city. So that the customer, the businesses, the citizens, all, let's say, the, the, the stakeholders are being serviced in such a way that the process is for them. It is not a process of the city, it is the process for your customers, for your citizens. And the same similarity I see in Rotterdam. So what we see there is how to approach that. What can we learn from each other? For instance, here in Amsterdam there is a lot about uh, artificial intelligence, about text mining, about understanding the questions of the customers. So that is something which you can learn and which you can see and which you can again, improve your business with. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good example. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Hans, I've heard you talk a lot about mind design improve, and yeah. one of my, I think, was the first question, what is the difference between process intelligence and process mining? And yeah. I think the proposition we see here has a lot to do with that as well. I think that is making very clear in the steps of the process that mind is essential to get the facts from your processes which are being executed digitally towards a dashboard, towards a visualization in which you can really have a fact-based approach as is. Then you can see in this next step that you can design, and you can see over here, for instance, the swimming lanes which are being draw out of the data. Right? So it is not again writing on the wall. Now you are actually generating your as is swimming lanes and your process steps from mining. Then you are going to see, hey, when I'm looking at my major strategies and looking at my KPIs and my targets, actually we should be much more focusing on quality or we must focus on cost or you have to focus on time then you can adjust your swimming lanes because the more steps you have, the more chances that the time will 
increase and that is not your strategy. So you can design and redesign this by having a 2B. You can do some simulations. Again, on the data you have, you can see does it really shorten my time to market? Does it really help in a better satisfaction by the customer? And if that's the case, then you're going to the execution, to the improve. And then this to be is an as is. So you are here again, and then you can again mine and design improve. So what you see here is very intelligent. So this is process mining, and the entire governance is process intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, great, Hans. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, I heard some really valuable insights, learned a lot. Um, I hope you did as well. I hope you found it interesting, as interesting as I did. Um, like I said, if you have any questions now, feel free to leave them in the question pane. Um, if you would like to mo know more about Edso's uh, thesis, um, please let us know. We'll send it over. And if you want any other information, we have lots of information available from Marvin or from, uh, from Hans himself. Um, thanks for joining uh, and hope to see you in the future. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.